We are now on Unit 5, Chemical Reactions, and I've divided it into three parts. This is the first part, 5.1 and 5.2, Law of Conservation of Mass or Matter, and 5.2, Writing Chemical Equations. There are four other topics um, in this unit, but we will discuss them uh, later. So this unit is about how to figure out According to the law of mass conservation, the number of atoms at the beginning of a reaction is the same as the number of atoms at the end of the reaction. If that is the case, then the masses of the two sides, the ingredients, reactants, and the products are going to be identical, and so the reaction will be balanced. So, the law of mass conservation states that atoms are not created or destroyed during a chemical reaction occurring inside a closed system. Nothing escapes or comes in. And in such a situation, atoms only get rearranged into new substances. So you have to learn how to uh, write the new compounds form if I give you the names of the ingredients. And here is an example of uh, one mole of methane. Methane is uh, CH4 natural gas. Don't worry about the term mole. Consider it a number like a uh, dozen. It's, it means a large quantity of something. We will talk about what a mole is later. So if you have a mole of methane, this is the mass of a mole of methane. Um, and if you have a mole of oxygen, it is 32 grams. If you have a mole of carbon dioxide, it's 44 grams. If you have a mole of water, it's 18 grams. Um, so in this equation, you have the same number of each color of atoms on either side. So showing that it is balanced. So you have one red on either side and four browns on either side and four greens on either side. So one mole of methane combines with two moles of oxygen, two oxygen molecules or two moles to form one molecule or mole of carbon dioxide and two molecules or moles of water. So if you add up these masses, they both equal 80. So if you ended up doing this chemical reaction inside a closed container, after you mix the ingredients, the masses would be the same. This is how you show the law of mass conservation is true. By measuring the mass of the reactants and mass of the products inside a closed reaction. Now let's look at writing chemical formulas and some few basic steps about balancing equations. Um, you're, I'm going to show you this using a simple example. Let's just make a cheese sandwich. So you have two pieces of bread, one size of cheese to make one cheese sandwich. So you're going to put and and combine into in the middle. And bread slices, we're going to use B to signify bread slices when we write the chemical formula. After all, the chemical formula is a recipe for making a compound. In our case, the compound is bread and cheese sandwiches. We will use a capital C for cheese, not carbon, and BC for bread and cheese sandwich. So we are going to write it like this. And then we are going to put a plus and an arrow pointing towards the products as we do in chemical reactions. And then since we have two bread slices, you're going to put a two here. And then since we have two bread slices in this compound to balance this. You have to put a subscript here. And then note that there is no coefficient here. Coefficient is the number you put in front of a substance. That means it's one. And then the mole ratio is how many um, moles of each one or molecules of each one you have is 2 is to 1 is to 1 in the order in which it is written in this formula. So the number in front is a coefficient. It shows the number of molecules or moles. And the number that shows after 
the element symbol but at the bottom is called a subscript it shows you the number of atoms or moles this shows molecules this shows atoms but they both show moles of atoms or molecules as well so you can show it in um, a chemical reaction format instead of sandwiches and cheese using atoms like this and chemical formulas are recipes for making a compound so you can make a chemical compound using the formula now let's look at the principles of writing chemical equations there's nine things i want you to remember number one ingredients in a chemical reaction are called reactants and the things produced are called products arrow always points to the products we also show the physical state of the reactants and the products using a subscript shown in brackets uh, with symbols explaining the chemical uh, state so gas is a g solid is an s l is a liquid only used for water and aq is um, aqueous meaning it's dissolved in water you write that um, symbol after the formula of the compound each reactant and product is written uh, as a chemical formula or recipe showing the number and type of atom it's made out of the atoms are shown as element symbols and the number of moles of each atom is shown as a subscript after its element symbol i've highlighted the subscripts over here this means you have two H atoms, um, two moles of hydrogen atoms and two moles of oxygen atoms. The two after the O only belongs to O, not this one. If the number is before the element, it does not belong to that number, element. The number of molecules or moles are shown as coefficients which are placed in front of the formula as shown here. Coefficients and subscripts are always a whole number. You never have decimals. Sometimes when you balance equations, you may end up with the decimals um, coefficient. Then you have to multiply the entire equation from a whole number that converts that um, co um, decimal number into a whole number. Number seven, when balancing equations, only coefficients are changed for products and reactants. And equations are balanced to obey the law of conservation of matter. If there is any uh, one of anything, you do not write number one. You just leave it as it is. Numbers are only used when you have more than one. And here is an example. So if you have uh, one mole of H2O, you don't put a one in front of the H2O, you just write H2O. Since there is only one mole of oxygen atoms in H2O, you do not write H2O1. Um, in ionic compounds, the cations and the anions swap between the two uh, ingredients to form uh, the react, uh, product. So cation is always written first in the formula of a compound. We learned this in 4.2 ionic compounds. So here are two ionic compounds. I've shown the cations in blue. Um, lithium and sodium will swap their partners and make new compounds. Lithium will combine with hydroxide to make lithium hydroxide shown over here. And sodium will combine with chlorine to make sodium chloride. I need you to remember all of this and please write this down. Let's look at some word problems. How to write equations for them. Hydrogen gas combines with oxygen gas to form water in liquid state. So you're going to write H2G plus O2G equals H2OL. We haven't gone into balancing equations yet. So you're just writing the unbalanced equation. Second one, aqueous lithium hydroxide combines with sodium, solid sodium to produce aqueous sodium hydroxide and solid lithium. 
Now, if you can't remember what hydroxide is, I suggest you look at 4.2 ionic compounds uh, video. And um, you need to know how the polyatomic ions and how to write chemical formulas using crisscross for this. So, lithium hydroxide is LiOH because lithium is a plus one and OH is minus one. And then sodium. You're going to put a plus here, combines to form NaOH, Na is a plus one and OH is a minus one, and lithium. Then you're going to put the states, aqueous for sodium hydroxide and lithium hydroxide, and solid for sodium and lithium on either side. Let's look at a more complex problem. Can you tell me the number of moles? of each element or number of atoms of each element is found in a chemical formula when I give you the formula. So here are five formulas. I want you to pause this video and calculate how many of each one is there. Okay, so first you are going to um, multiply everything in ammonium sulfate inside the brackets by two as shown over here. So you have two sodiums and eight hydrogens and one sulfur and three oxygens. Then you are going to do the second one, aluminum hydroxide. Everything um, outside and inside the brackets get multiplied by the three. So you have three oxygens and three hydrogens and one aluminum. And calcium hydrogen carbonate everything inside the brackets gets multiplied by two so you have two hydrogens two carbons and two times three six oxygens and one calcium iron three sulfate remember iron is a d block element when you write ionic compounds names for d block elements you have to state their oxidation state this charge came from fe and this two came from so4 based on reverse crisscross when you write their name you have to state their oxidation state so iron 3 sulfate because d block elements have different oxidation states so everything uh, inside the brackets gets multiplied by three so you have three sulfurs and 12 oxygens and two ions and then magnesium phosphate everything inside the brackets gets multiplied by two so you have two phosphor phosphorus and two times four eight oxygens and three magnesiums okay let's shift gears and do the same five substances when you have coefficients in front of them and then see if you can tell me how many moles of each element are, is there. This kind of thing is required for you to be able to balance chemical equations because you're going to have to count the number of um, atoms of each element on either side. So now how do you do this? Pause the video and see if you can do this. So you're going to multiply everything in the formula by 2, everything. And then you get, here you're going to multiply everything by 3. In calcium hydrogen carbonate, everything is multiplied by 4. In iron 3 sulfate, everything is multiplied by 3. And finally, in magnesium phosphate, everything is multiplied by 2. And then you should have double the value you got for the previous question here, triple the value you got for the previous one here, quadruple for this one, triple for this one, and double for this one. I hope you got that right. If not, rewind and pause this video and try to do it again. Uh, some more practice problems. Um, let's see if you have a good understanding of the concept of the moles and the molecules um, when you put a coefficient in front of a sim, uh, chemical formula. So 2NH3 represents how many moles? 
that's going to be 2 moles of NH3. And how many molecules of NH3? That's also 2. And then how many uh, moles of H and N are represented in here? So it's going to be 3 times 2, 6 moles of H. And 2 times 1, 2 moles of N. And then same thing for the number of atoms. And finally, um, can you explain in words what happens if the subscript is changed instead of the coefficients when balancing an equation? Try to pause and think about the answer. Okay, um, so if you only change the subscript, you will change the chemical formula of the reactants or the products and then you will have an entirely different chemical reaction although you have a balanced equation so let me show you an example let's look at this example h2 plus o2 gas combined to form water now you have two hydrogens on the reactants side and two hydrogens on the product side so that is balanced however you have two oxygens on the reactant side but one oxygen on the product side so it's not balanced so if a student puts h2o2 meaning hydrogen peroxide in here instead of putting twos in front or the back uh, uh, of the substances you will still balance this equation but not the right way it will obey the law of mass conservation but it is not the same uh, recipe and also um, if you drink water you will be fine if you drink h2o2 you will may not be so fine there is a bad joke a chemist went to a bar and asked a glass of h2o and then his friend who went with him said i will have some h2o2 and then one of them died so the one the second guy drank hydrogen peroxide concentrated okay let's look at a review um, the ingredients in a chemical reaction are called reactants and the things produced are called products and the arrow always points to the product and we show um, the physical states of the reactants and the products with using G, S, L or A, Q symbols within brackets after the compound and when you write a chemical formula for a substance you write the symbols and subscripts for each element the subscript shows the number of moles of each atom that you have in the chemical formula and um, the number of molecules or moles of the substance is shown as a coefficient in front of the compound formula and coefficients and subscripts are always whole numbers and when you balance equations you only balance the coefficients and you do this to obey the law of mass conservation which states that when a chemical reaction is occurring inside a closed system Atoms are not created or destroyed and the masses of the products and the reactants are the same. Atoms only get rearranged when you form new substances. And in chemistry, when you have one of anything, you do not write a number one. So there is no one subscript or one coefficient. And you should be able to write chemical formulas for ionic compounds. Um, if I give you the reactants, you should be able to write the product chemical formulas. And the cations and the anions in the two reactants get swapped. And that's it. I will see you in the next video and please do the exit ticket.